Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. I want to spotlight shares of Apple right now, up more than 2% after their big rollout of Macs with their new uh, in-house design chips. The company unveiled the anticipated M1 microchips uh, to enable faster performance, better battery life, perhaps even uh, bigger profits after shifting away from Intel chips. Of course, the hardware update follows the new iPhone rollout and updated wearables with a focus on health earlier this year at Apple, too. So joining us now to break it all down in terms of Apple's new endeavors is John Scully, who led Apple as CEO for a decade and current CMO and chairman of RX Advance as well. Uh, John, it's good to be chatting with you today. Uh, first up, just want to get your take on the momentous shift away from Intel here and, and what it signals to you as Apple clearly has now a lot on its plate. Well, I think Apple's making very smart moves. Uh, as we all know, Apple doesn't usually uh, care about being the first, they care about being the best. Uh, so for years, they have uh, lagged about 18 months behind Samsung in terms of technology like uh, the latest cameras inside of the iPhone. But uh, this new microprocessor that, that is homegrown at, at Apple is a really big deal because uh, as Apple has focused on security being important, particularly in healthcare, uh, the fact that they can do so much on board uh, on an iPhone, now they can do it on, on a Mac. Uh, that's a big deal. And particularly as we see things like video and online gaming and uh, many of the uh, really big growth areas in healthcare, of course, um, having Apple's uh, use their own microprocessor, not dependent on Intel, not dependent on uh, Samsung as much as they had been in the past, uh, that's a big deal. And you'll see that playing out throughout the decade, I believe, in, in many new uh, types of uh, capabilities and services from Apple. And John, on those microprocessors, that really just the latest step from Apple to try and fortify its ecosystem. You talked about healthcare. That that's certainly been a big growth area for Apple. We saw the most recent Apple Watches being able to measure blood oxygen levels uh, very timely with what's happening with the pandemic. As you look at that particular segment for Apple, uh, where are we in the growth story for that? Is this just the beginning uh, how, how much growth do you see moving forward from here? Well, Tim Cook has said uh, publicly a number of times that he believes that perhaps the greatest legacy of, of Apple uh, could well be in healthcare. And uh, I think it's going to go well beyond what Apple has done so far with their very successful Apple Watch. But let me kind of zoom out and give you a, a context. I've spent the last uh, 14 years uh, largely working in health tech and uh, the thing that I think about is that we have a U.S. healthcare industry that is approaching $4 trillion. Uh, about 85% of that spend, of that almost $4 trillion, is with chronic care patients. And so it's really a sick care industry. And so when big tech, whether it's Apple or Amazon or Google or, or even uh, entrepreneurial companies, uh, think about it, uh, they are starting to focus on not the sick care, but they're focusing on the fact that about 75% of chronic care diseases are reversible. The type two diabetes, reversible. Sleep apnea, re reversible. Certain types of heart ailments are reversible. Obesity, reversible. So what the real opportunity for technology, and Apple is obviously you know, a leader at this point uh, in health tech, is to say, how do we focus on preventative and wellness care as opposed to just sick care? And then you can start to play in the importance of health tech and technologies and what the uh, digital economy can play in healthcare. So that's what really gets me excited. And particularly about things like uh, when you think about government policies with a new administration coming in, uh, we've started to see uh, telehealth. Uh, has become a serious business. Now, Teladoc is uh, having acquired Livongo. It's, it's now a $40 billion market cap company. And it's doing about $2 billion of, of revenue now. And it's the leader in telehealth, but there's other companies like Amwell and MD Live, which are growing incredibly fast. All of these companies have had an acceleration of growth during the pandemic. People couldn't have face-to-face -face appointments with their doctors. Well, we're just at the early days of telehealth. It's less than 10% usage today. It was estimated by many people by later in this decade, it'll be over 40%. So I wouldn't be surprised to see companies like Amazon and Apple and Google uh, looking at 
telehealth and looking at uh, remote patient monitoring, which means uh, digital, of course. And mm -hmm. there are things that the government can continue to do uh, in terms of putting a priority with uh, rules and regulations to make it easier for uh, telehealth to become as broadly adopted over this decade as fintech uh, has been over the last decade. Yeah, and John, I mean, on that opportunity, when you look at it, having led Apple before, uh, do you think that the way the company is structured now under Tim Cook is good enough to have them capitalize on that opportunity you're describing? Or do you think that right now the company might need to acquire some of these people who are already working intensely, specifically focused on healthcare rather than developing some of these things internally? Well, Apple has never uh, grown its company through acquisition. You know, it does acquire, you know, lots of little companies. I think over 200 companies uh, in, in the past decade have been acquired by, by Apple. But these are relatively small acquisitions, you know, several hundred million dollars. Uh, the one exception was Beats, uh, where they had to get uh, in, into streaming music uh, quickly. But I think for the most part, Apple will continue to build uh, its, its own businesses. I don't think it's going to change the way it does. It's organized vertically. It has you know, a credible talent, uh, but it takes its time. It's in no hurry to do things, but it wants to do things better than anybody else. And I don't see why Apple would move away from that formula. John, let me ask you a, a, another question that, that is hanging over the tech space as a whole right now, which is, what does this tension between the U.S. and China really mean for the tech sector? We've certainly seen a very elevated under this administration. We've got another deadline coming up on potentially TikTok getting banned. But now you've got the Biden administration coming in, which hasn't made very clear how they're going to approach this. How do you see this relationship evolving and what does it ultimately mean for innovation on either side? Well, I think the reality is that uh, China is going to continue to be very successful uh, uh, there's a, a hundred year uh, journey that China has been pretty articulate about uh, by 2049, the hundred year anniversary after uh, Chow and, uh, after Mao Zedong uh, started uh, what is now the current uh, China Communist Party, that they intend to uh, largely replace many of the Western institutions that were created after the Second World War, you know, like the IMF, like the World Bank. Uh, like uh, NATO and things of that sort. But that's not going to happen in a military sense. It's going to happen, if it does happen that way, it's going to happen over you know, another couple of decades. So the reality is uh, China is drawing their boundaries of the parts of the world that they want to have more dominance in, like the South China Sea. Uh, the U.S. and China are going to get along. I don't think we're going to see you know, any military actions between us. Uh, but the reality is that uh, we have to learn how to coexist. And I think that the Biden administration uh, is much more experienced than the current administration on uh, how to play that particular strategy out. And uh, I suspect that uh, even though there'll be you know, tensions uh, over different issues between China and the United States, I suspect that we'll learn how to get along a lot better. In the tech world, we already are getting along. I mean, uh, look at companies like Adobe, uh, that is incredibly successful, uh, but they have very close ties back back to China, for uh, which helps them move beyond their original business of uh, doing tools for uh, various types of creative tools. Uh, and now they are, you know, in many dominant areas and become a you know a major global company. And we'll continue to see cooperations, I think, between Chinese companies and American companies. Uh, they just won't always be in the headlines. Yeah, and, and Apple, one of those, certainly one of those companies uh, is benefiting from uh, those mutual relationships as well. But John Scully, a uh, privilege to have you on to chat all that today. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much.